How's everybody doing? Thank you all for coming out today. My name is John Anakin. Man, am I thrilled to be here in Singapore. It took a couple days to get over here, but you guys have been so gracious. And I can understand why when you come to Singapore, not a lot of people go back to the United States or wherever they're from. Uh, a tremendous culture, a tremendous people, and obviously... Everyone here with the Ultimate Fighting Championship is very excited to be bringing the first ever UFC fight card here to Singapore tomorrow night. Show of hands, how many have tickets for the fights tomorrow night? All right, that's good. Dare I ask how many don't have tickets yet? All right, well, we might have to change that by the end of this Q&A. So an exciting fight card, obviously. We're going to showcase some local talent. Royston Wee, the first Singaporean fighter to ever sign with the UFC, one of the guys that I'm very much looking forward to see and see how his game translates to the big show. And what a main event we've got in store here. Tarek Safadine fighting against Lim Hyun Gyu. Huge opportunity for Lim to see what he can do and potentially vault into contention if he can take out Tarek Safadine. So we have got a Q&A for you. And then, of course, the fighters will tip this very scale at about 6 o'clock. So, again, thank you all for coming out. Should be a good hour or so. Uh, now it is my great privilege to bring out uh, a former world champion, uh, a movie star, a tremendous lifelong martial artist, a guy who I have looked up to a great deal, and I hope I get to call one of his fights at some point in time. He's been busy with the Ultimate Fighter China and is now amidst a 16-day media tour, and he stopped here in Singapore. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. He is Kong Lee. Yeah, versus Lim. Tomorrow night, live from the Marina Bay Sands here in Singapore, former strike force welterweight champion Tarek Safin. What's up, everyone? Away the UFC debut. All right, so essentially we have microphones set up all around on both sides. I don't know where exactly those microphones are, but they're somewhere. Uh, they're okay. We have microphones, so don't be shy. Kung Lee is yours for the next half hour or so. Any question you have, nothing is off limits, so feel free to fire away. Yes, sir. Maybe a few things, but yeah, nothing's off limits. Hi, Kung Lee. Nice to meet you. Nice question. Um, now that you finished here, here, here. filming The Ultimate Fighter, what did you learn most from the actual fighters? What I learned most is uh, how stressful um, being a coach at the same time being in Dana White's shoes was. Uh, I've had stress before, but that was uh, very, very stressful because I had to make some decisions that could affect certain fighters, could affect the show, and I had to make the right decisions to make sure the show continues and keeps its, you know, um, the, like the flow going. Where's that other microphone? Yes. Hey, Kung. Kung Lee? Over, Over that side and back. All right, right Hello. There. All right. Hey, do, do you know when uh, we're going to see you in the Octagon next? And uh, is there any uh, matchup you desire to fight against? You know, uh, before I got to be part of the Ultimate Fighter China, we were in talks to fight Michael Bisbane. And Dana flew me out and says, hey, I need you to be the mentor coach and be me in, in China for this show. So that was a great opportunity. So I was able to be in you know, wear several hats on, on the show, but uh, hopefully after this media tour, I'm going to get back into the gym and train like a fighter and, and see where I'm at. And I, I plan to be back this year, 2014, baby. I'm going to come back and throw my spinning wheel kicks and spinning yeah. back kicks and get them, them throws back on, on the map again. So don't worry, I'll be back. All right, thanks. Uh, how many more fights do you reckon you've got left in you in the UFC? Well, um, well, I take one fight at a time, but I have three fights left on my contract, and I plan to get, a, get all those fights done. Thank you. Yes. Hi, Kong. Uh, in light of Anderson's uh, injury, uh, hopefully he'll recover soon, are you still hesitant about throwing kicks, or you still throw them regardless? Not at all, baby. I'm going to still throw them hard, but I'm going to throw them to the head and less to the legs. <laughs> Good question. I like that. Topical question. Yes, sir. Okay, hi, uh, hi Kang. I'm Wadi from the fight scene. Okay, there's a bit of controversy for TUF China because there was one guy who is a yoga instructor and has no MMA background experience. Maybe you have some comments on that. Okay. Yes, uh, I'm not sure how many of you guys seen the show, but some yoga instructor got through. Uh, that was not... 
UFC's uh, doing. I believe that was part of the TV show that he was from the hometown. And somehow that guy snuck underneath the radar. And that was a decision that I had to make. And uh, if you haven't watched it yet, I won't ruin it for you. But one of the coaches had to go and, you know, put a little hurt on him and, and let him feel what punches with the four ounce gloves feel like and uh, that's what happened thank you anybody over here show of hands anybody Hello. yes sir hi Kang uh, I was just wondering right what what uh, you think about like Sancho because I, I know you do Sancho right but in UFC it's it's not as like prevalent as like Muay Thai and other striking styles so uh, I'm I'm not sure why it hasn't ca catch on yet because Sancho involves throws and spinning kicks and stuff. So you you think that it's it's a very practical uh, striking style, but it's it's not catched on yet, right? Yeah, you know what I do is uh, a Chinese art called Sancho, or you can say Sanda. Uh, you know it ha includes punching, kicking, low, middle, high, catching, kicks, sweeping, throwing. But I, I, I have a wrestling background. I was a high school All-American, uh, junior college, uh, collegiate, all, like All-American, and I wrestled year-round for like eight years. So MMA is like top of the food chain in, in the fighting arts, and UFC is the biggest promotion in the world, and that's why they're getting into China. That's why they focus their attention on Ultimate Fighter China to find the best Chinese fighters so they can develop them and get them into the UFC. And they, there's going to be a, a handful of guys that you guys will really enjoy watching. They can kick, they can throw, you know, and their groundwork is getting better. So, you know, it's just, it takes time. And uh, there's a lot of fighters out there that are unknown and they, they're floating under the radar. UFC's job, they're going to find them, and pretty soon you'll see all these Chinese fighters or different fighters that use the art and, uh, and people will enjoy it because there's a lot of spin stuff in, in, in what Sanda offers. Thank you. Hi Kang, Navin Nambia. I've got a question for you. Uh, you've got a long and illustrious career. Who's the toughest opponent you face today? Okay, let's, uh, the toughest opponent in just uh, competition-wise or in mixed martial arts? Um, in, comp in just overall a martial arts competition, because I fought on many platforms like Shidokan, which is like a triathlon of martial arts, which has bare knuckle karate, then it goes to Muay Thai, then it goes to MMA, but in that, I fought this uh, fighter named um, Arnie Silverdale. He was one of Andy Hugg's students. And uh, because of that fight, you know, I spent several weeks with a sore jaw. Didn't eat much except uh, drank a lot of fluids. But my toughest fight, I would have to say, against Frank Shamrock, just because, you know, he kept coming and, you know, he rocked me a few times. And, and it was just one of those great battles that I enjoyed you know, punching his face. <laughs> Good way to put it. Where's that microphone? Anybody over there? We got to get a microphone up in the rafters because I know they got some questions up there. Anybody over there? Come on, don't be shy. Kung Lee's yours for another 15 or 20 minutes. All right, a brave soul there with the tank top right behind you. Yes, sir. How you going? Um, what's your next movie coming up? Next movie coming out is a movie called Certain Justice. It's, uh, it'll be coming out in March. It stars uh, Dolph Lundgren, uh, Vinnie Jones, and Brianna Evigan. But we're here to talk about fights and some crazy matchups like this main event here. It's going to be some fireworks. How good is this guy, too? They try to steer the conversation to movies, and you bring us right back. We like that. That's right. Uh, yeah, my question uh, is uh, fighting related. You mentioned uh, Michael Bisping. Uh, is, is that something that's uh, still in the works, and is that a fight that you'd like to happen? I would love to fight Michael Bisping. One, he likes to bring the fight. He, uh, he comes to fight, and, uh, you know, I come to fight, and I think that would just be a great fight for the fans. But I'm open.
but that'll be top on the list. While we are waiting for our next question, I want to get your thoughts on this main event. Huge opportunity, obviously, for Lim Hyun Gyu against Tarek Safadin. I know you're familiar with Safadin from the Strike Force days. How do you see it playing out? You know, in mixed martial arts, especially inside the octagon, when you put on four ounce gloves, anything can happen. As, uh, of course, Tarek has a lot more experience, but Lim ha has. Uh, you know, heavy hands and anything can happen. So I hate to predict fights, but I would say Tarek has the edge on this one. All right, we'll see how it plays out. Mixed reviews from the crowd there. Yes, sir. Uh, hey, Kong. Uh, question, out of the card for tomorrow night, out of all of the fighters, who are you most intrigued of? You know, I, I think a lot, all these fights are really good matchups. You know, the, for me, the fight that ends up being the fight of the night will be the one that I'm more interested in because, you know, it's like a surprise. You don't know. Sometimes on paper, when you see two fighters match up and all of a sudden they fight a fight where both guys are cautious and they're, no one wants to lose and no one wants to go out there and put it, leave it out, leave it all inside the octagon, you get upset at, and the fans get upset. But some, sometimes these fighters that have they're building their name and they come in and they just they throw and they're trying to kill each other those are the fights that are exciting but you don't know let's see who comes in with their a game and who's going to be reckless and just goes for the knockout and brings brings it i i think this card's going to be full of these guys because everyone's trying to make a name except you know right Tarek. <laughs> when you only have one chance to make a first impression 15 of the 20 fighters you will see tomorrow night have never stepped foot inside the octagon before. So when you talk about bringing it and trying to build up your name, uh, no better opportunity to do that than in your UFC debut. Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you talk about how the travel and the jet lag might affect a fighter before performing and how it's affected you in your career? For me, uh, I'm, I, I, I'll try to come prepared. So when I fought Rich Franklin, I came to China two weeks before the fight even happened. I was trained out in Hong Kong and made sure that my, my jet lag was not going to affect me. And trust me, if I would have came the week of the fight, like on that Tuesday, come Saturday, I definitely would have been jet lagged, would have been tired. So, gotta be, you got you, you to gotta come early. Hi, Kong. I saw Brian Stan skulking around a while ago how about a fight with him and if there's anyone else here who likes the idea why don't you let Dana White know I'll be a good replacement for Joe Silva if you, if you didn't know I believe Brian's into you know TV work now and uh, you know uh, I don't think that's gonna happen I think the fight with Michael Bisbane is gonna be more more you know more likely to happen yeah yeah, Brian Stan is done fighting, unfortunately, and I can promise you you don't want Joe Silva's job. If you knew the inner workings of it at all, I can promise uh, it's not necessarily a gig that you want. Where's that other microphone? And if you didn't know that, you know, Brian Stan is not fighting anymore, you just sent in a resume that's unfilled out. Bam. Um. All right, we got one in the very back. Hey, Kong, quick question. How did you mess up your toes so badly that it's turned inward? I've always wanted to know that. It's over the years of kicking, you know. Actually, actually it's, it's more of a whipping now because there's a sharp point. So I call it the ninja toe kick. And if you ask a lot of my uh, training partners, actually my trainer's in the back. His name is Scott Sheely. I've hit him a few times. And uh, you, this is what you hear. Have you ever taken someone's eyes Scott, you hear that? <laughs> Have you ever taken someone's eyes out with them? Because, you know, it's kind of funky how it angles in and badly like that. No, but if you want to come up here, I can throw a uh. kick at your eye and maybe it'll take your eye out, you know. Man, did you see how quickly he got rid of that microphone after that veiled threat there from Kung Lee? <laughs> Any other takers? Got a few more minutes with Kung Lee. Then we have a few other special guests to bring out. Don't be shy. Also on the card tomorrow night, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. A brave soul back for seconds. What do you got? Um, yeah, you have um, uh, this style of fighting, which, which we see a lot um, in Asia, particularly uh, fighters from kind of China, the Philippines, have this kind of like Sander, uh, Sanchao-based style, 
we really, it, it's very rare to see it in America and in the UFC. Um, is, is, is coaching um, something that you're potentially going to go into when you stop fighting? And, and would you like to kind of develop more younger fighters to have a similar style uh, of striking to yourself? Believe it or not, I've been coaching since I started fighting as a professional. But as an amateur, I was getting a lot more coaching from other people. But as soon as I turned pro, I already had a... You know, I already have a team. I work with uh, you know several fighters, and coaching it's 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 a tough job, but I, I wouldn't mind it. It just takes a lot of time. Uh, you know, what, what, as long as I'm still part of the fight game, one way or another, I'm gonna do my best to continue and give back in in whatever way I could. You know, you had some experience when you first crossed into the UFC. Not as much as Tatsuya Kawajiri, 40 pro fights or, or more. And he makes his UFC debut. How different did it feel for you? Uh, we hear about these UFC jitters. Uh, how different did it feel for you, despite being a former Strikeforce champion, when you finally did cross over into the UFC for the first time? Just put it this way. Usually for... For all, I've been inside the ring and on many different platforms of fighting. You get nervous. It's, it's only human to be nervous. But before I... Even though it was in San Jose, it was my fight first fight right. in the UFC against Vanley. It, was, it wasn't the name Vanley that, oh my God, you know, it's Vanley. It was more like I'm in the UFC and I'm walking out the same way I walk out every time I fought in every fight in mixed martial arts. But when I was backstage and I was on deck ready to walk out, I, I probably dry heaved. Nothing came out because my stomach was empty, but I probably dry heaved like three or four times before I, before I stepped inside the octagon to fight. So nerves, it's, it's crazy. It's like you're in the UFC. It's like from minor leagues to the big leagues. You know, you're, you're stepping on the plate to pitch against, you know, someone who's, gonna, who, who's used to hitting home runs. That's how you feel. Yeah, it's always interesting to see how, how fighters handle the bright lights under the octagon for the first time. All right, now we have a few more special guests to bring out for you. The UFC will make its second visit to Macau on March 1st, and the headliners that night are here with us in the building today. Please join me in welcoming Dong Hyun Kim and John Hathaway. How are you? Nice to see you. Good to see you, man. There he is. How are you? Oh, good. Let's go, people. Come on. John and I will share a mic. I, you know, these two, you guys were supposed to fight at UFC 120. Obviously, the fight didn't happen. You've had to spend a lot of time together this week. I guess I'll pose the question to you, John. What's it been like to spend you know, extended time with a guy who you're going to be sharing the octagon with here in a few months? Uh, again, you know, it's, it's been great to spend it with Kim. Like, we're, we're both great athletes, you know, at the, the top of this sport, and uh, we're both looking forward to putting on a great show on, on March 1st, you know. So it's been very amicable between us, and uh, it's, it's great, you know. Uh, oh, oh. Yeah, 일단은 어, 정말 강한 선수고 강한 선수와 어, 이제 저는 처음으로 메인 이벤트로서 싸우는데 개인적으로 영광이고 이기는 거진 거보다는 정말 어, 조네스의 선수하고 정말 어, 기억에 남을 만한 멋진 경기 하는 게 가장 큰 목표입니다. First of all, John Hathaway is a is a great fighter, and uh, this is my uh, very first uh, main event uh, fight. And win or lose, I really want to put on a great fight, and uh, and I, I think it's a tremendous opportunity for me uh, to be able to fight uh, against a great fighter like John Hathaway. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, don't go too far, my man. We're going to need you again. Any other questions? Don Kyung Kim, John Hathaway, and Kung Lee are all yours. I got a million questions for these guys. Uh, John, I just want to ask you quickly. Uh, zero appearances for you here in 2013. From a health standpoint, how are you? As you, I'm, I guess you're probably jonesing to get back in there, I'd imagine. Again, yeah, back health, and uh, I really can't wait to be competing back in there. You know, I'm really going to make 2014 my year this year, and uh, you know, I'm lucky I get to kick it off against such a great competitor. You know, and uh, on the main event as well as a five-round fight, so. Uh, it's going to be my first five-round fight, so I, I really can't wait for this. You know, I always come in super fit for every fight, and uh, I can't wait to, to prove it again, you know. And 
Keep going. How, how early are you going to get to Macau? Have you thought about that at all? You know, I, I've been looking at it about, about 10 days to two weeks, you know, with the uh, time zone and kind of climate change and uh, just to get used to it. So, I, again, just get there early and make sure my weight cut's all good and I'm on weight and uh, looking forward to competing. I want to ask Dong Hyun Kim about this main event here tomorrow night. Tarek Safadine and Lim Hyun Gyu in your division. Uh, certainly an important fight. How do you see it playing out? 김동현 선수한테 질문을 하겠습니다. 어, 내일 테릭 사파덴하고 유명규 선수가 사실 지금 저 김동현 선수하고 같은 체급인데요. 내일 그 매치에 대해서 어떻게 지금 저 생각을 하고 계시는지. 어, 이명규 선수는 어, 아직까지 뭐 자기의 보는 모습을 다 보여주지 못한 강한 선수고 어, 웰터컵에서 가장 큰 신장을 가지고 정말 모든 선수들이 도열할 만한 아마 well, Hyungyu Lim uh, has just gotten started his career with the UFC, and I don't think he really has been able to show all of his stuff yet. Uh, and uh, within a year or two, I think everybody's going to be able to really recognize what kind of per, you know, fighter he is. And uh, by far, he is one of the biggest and tallest uh, in, in, his, uh, in his weight class. And I think everyone will soon recognize his name. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Uh, this is for John and Kim. Now that uh, GSP has uh, vacated the title, do you two feel that the division is wide open? And are you excited about being able to uh, have the opportunity to eventually have a title shot? え、질문은 어, 다음 매치가 로비랄러와 싸우는데 로비랄러 선수 또한 굉장히 강자이기 때문에 누가 될지 모르겠지만 어쨌든 UFC에서 가장 어, 빡센 체급이 웰터급인 건 확실합니다. Well, um, my, in my opinion, I think uh, Johnny Hendricks pretty much won the, the, the last fight against uh, George St. Pierre, uh, and uh, Johnny Hendricks is uh, now going against uh, Robbie Rowler, and, uh, and Robbie is also a very, very tough fighter. And win or lose, or whoever becomes a champion, as far as uh, I'm concerned, this welterweight is by far the most competitive uh, weight class in the UFC. Thank you, John Hathaway. Your thoughts on this welterweight landscape certainly looks a little bit different a few weeks ago. Again, you know, it's a, a real exciting time to be a welterweight. You know, it's, it's completely all open. You know, obviously Lawler's fighting Hendrix. You've obviously got some great other fights, you know, and uh, it's very competitive. It's one of the most competitive weight classes in there, and, uh, you know, we're both lucky to be in this and be in the mix for this now. Yeah, it always has been. All right, where's that microphone? Yes. Uh, hi, this question is for John. Uh, Kim is a judo guy. So how are you training to counter his judo? Because as we saw in uh, Ronda Rousey, her judo was pretty slick. So how do you plan to counter that? Again, you know, uh, obviously I could uh, choose to avoid the clinch with him and obviously uh, avoid a lot of the throws. Um, I know he's actually got great choke defense, he's got some great chokes himself, you know, so it's going to be very hard on a lot of the single legs for him and stuff like that, but uh, I put in a lot of judo guys, we've got a lot of European judo guys competing with me, and, uh, you know, a lot of tall southpaws as well, just to get used to the range of someone like him. So, uh, you know, working with a lot of judo guys, working what I can and can't do against people like this, you know. So, um, yeah, it's great. That is your main event, March 1st in Macau, John Hathaway and Don Kyun Kim. We've got a few more minutes with these guys. The fighters are making their way. I see we've got a hand up in the back there. The fighters will be here in about seven minutes or so, so we hope you guys will all stick around as these fighters weigh in for our fight night tomorrow in Singapore. Yes, sir. Hi, this question is for Kang Lee. Uh, what do you think about fighting Sonnen if he gets first Vanderlei? Excuse me? What, one more? If, he, uh, if Sonnen gets past Vanderlei, who do you, what do you think about fighting him? Actually, I prefer to fight Vanderlei. <laughs> I, I, I want a rematch against Vanderlei, definitely. Thank you. I see one in the back over here, if we could get a microphone to that young man. I know he's not going to ask Kung Lee about kicking people in the eye this time, I think. 
front of this Michael. This is to Don and uh, John. Both you guys are considerably large for your weight division. Standing next to Kong, no offense Kong, you, you might kick me, but they look bigger than you right now. How hard is your weight cut and generally how much weight do you guys lose prior to a fight? Obviously, yeah, both me and Kim are, are large framed world awaits. You know, for me, I never cut more than, say, um, about five to ten pounds of actual water weight. Like, I, I bring a lot of it down through diet, building up to the camp. I try to get my body fat very lean, just as I, I find it makes it an easier cut for me and uh, less stress on my body, so I perform a lot better. Kim Jong-il 선수한테 물어보겠습니다. 보통 체급이 보통 몸무게에서 체급을 낮추기 위해서 몸무게 정도를 어느 정도 절감을 하는지. 어, 현재 체중 어, 91kg 정도 나오고 있습니다. 77이니까 뭐 13kg, 14kg 정도. Yeah, I normally go at about 91 kg, so you know, I, I lose about 14. 감사합니다. Any other brave souls before we put a bow on this Q&A? Any other questions? How many of you saw what Don Kyun Kim did to Eric Silva, by the way, in Brazil a few months back? Anybody? Yeah, pretty impressive going in there as the underdog in Brazil to do what he did. Uh, certainly worthy of this main event showcase on March 1st in Macau. Any other questions, folks? Don't be shy. I see. Hey, you know what? You might as well just run this Q&A, young man, if you're the only brave one. What do you got? Uh, yeah, I am looking for a job, actually, sir. Um, yeah, I've got a question for uh, John Hathaway. Uh, the first time I think I saw you fight was uh, as an amateur at uh, uh, Seoul Gilbert's place in Brighton at ZT's. Um, where, are you still um, based in the southeast of England, or have you kind of travelled elsewhere or travelled to America to train or anything like that? Uh, no, I'm still based... Uh, I'm actually based at London Shoe Fighters now, which, uh, as you might know, like, was Seoul's original camp, you know, and... Um, I just found, like, obviously the, the competition is just slightly better up there. I get slightly better sparring. We get a lot of the Europeans coming through, so uh, it's a very competitive environment. We, we get a lot of sparring in, you know. Obviously, uh, Souls is great. I, I sometimes pop in when I pop back down and see my family in, in Brighton and Hove. But, uh, you know, London's, London's a great place for MMA at the moment. It's really, uh, really booming. Thank you. Any other questions for these guys at all? Okay, we got another one in the back. If we could get a microphone over there. Thank you very much. Getting a full workout. Running this mic all over the place. Man, we got two guys asking all the questions. Questions for Don. Um, in relation to Japanese and Korean fighters at the moment, Korean fighters seem to have a surge in the performance and they seem to dominate in regarding all the Asian countries are coming out. What can you attribute that to that's uh, bringing about the Korean success? 그 지금 보면은 최근에 이제 일본 선수보다 한국 선수들이 굉장히 두각을 나타내고 있는데 그 어떤 면에서 한국 선수들이 이렇게 두, 이제 그더 우월하고 두, 두각을 나타내는지 대해서 거기에 대해서 좀 얘기를 해 주시기 바랍니다. 어 <웃음> 일단은 서양 선수들이 힘이나 체력이 좋지만 어 동양 선수는 어 정신력이 서양 선수들보다 훨씬 월등하다고 저는 생각합니다. 그중 동양 선수 중에서도 한국 선수들은 어 정말 정신력이 남다르고 어 DNA가 좀 다릅니다. 절대 지지 않는 투지와 끈기를 가지고 있습니다. Well, I, I, in terms of strength and the maybe the size, the the, the Korean fighters, uh, you know, may lack a little bit uh, against the Western fighters, but as, as far as the, uh, the the mental toughness. Uh, I would have to put the, uh, the Korean fighters at the very top, and um, you know they have tremendous uh, the ability to withstand uh, the stress, and they're able to really fight hard. Uh, I, I think it really really comes from the DNA, uh, and uh, something that that really is uh, you know unexplainable, but uh, it's, it's intangible. But the the the, uh, the the mental toughness is something that I think it really you know puts them you know apart from the other fighters. And you know, so many of the Korean fighters that you'll see on the fight card here tomorrow night and in the UFC going forward really look up to Kim Dong-kyun a great deal uh, for what he's done as a Korean pioneer for mixed martial arts. Any other last questions before we put a bow on things? Any final takes? All right, before we get out of here, oh wait, yes sir, final question, go ahead. Hey, how are you guys doing? Um, I was just wondering, I heard Bruce Buffer isn't announcing tomorrow, so who's going to be announcing the fighters? You have the great Joe Martinez. Do you know who that is? No, I don't. I'll find out tomorrow. He, uh, he worked at the WEC. He also has done a UFC show for us in Australia last year. 
Uh, he's a real gentleman. He's in the building here today, and uh, I think you'll enjoy his pipes and his work tomorrow night. Uh, please come to Melbourne soon. Say that again? Please come to Melbourne soon. Yeah, well, I think that might be the next stop, so we'll see if uh, they can. There are a few little hurdles there in Melbourne, but hopefully we can get that done. All right, a lot more to come here on stage. Thank you guys all for coming out. One last time, can we hear it for Kung Lee, John Hathaway, and Kim Dong-hyun. <laughs> Fellas.